Welcome to Canterbury, the home of Christianity in England and also a major student city steeped in history. We're going to give you the tour and show you some fun facts. As we're all about English, let's talk a little English. I'm from England, so you would say I'm English. These scones are English too. In the same way, you would describe these people and buildings from Canterbury as Cantorian. The name of the city became the source of the word canter, which describes the fast trotting of a horse. Pilgrims on their way to the cathedral would often ride their horse a little faster so they would, would arrive before curfew, giving rise to calling the movement the Canterbury Trot, which has today been shortened to canter. But where does the name Canterbury come from to start with? Well, I always thought it was an extension of the name of the county of Kent, which is partly right. People have been living here for over two million years. Stone Age axes and pots have been found by archaeologists, but we're going to flash forward in time to the Iron Age. At this time, the area was home to a Celtic tribe called the Cantiarchi. In this period, Kent was known as Cantland, which in Old Britonic language meant Cornerland, referring to its location on the southeast coast of the country. When Roman Emperor Claudius invaded England in 43 AD, he established the town of Duravernum Cantiacorum here the name translating to something like Stronghold of the Cantiarchy. In the 5th century, after the Romans left, the Anglo-Saxons translated the name as Cantwellbur, meaning Kentish Stronghold. Canterbury was an important place for the Romans as it was connected by road from London to Dover. It also connected Reculver, Lim and Richborough. In 200 CE, they built the first town wall consisting of seven gates. In the town itself, they constructed a temple, baths and a theatre, beginning the city's long history as a religious and cultural hotspot. Not much is left of the Roman town, although some ruins have been preserved in the Roman Museum and sections of the original wall around the north gate can be seen. In Dane John Gardens, a mound remains that is believed to be a Roman burial ground. The Roman gate is still visible, but it has been blocked up and incorporated into the wall that was rebuilt in the 14th century. But again, not much of the medieval wall stands today either. Of the six medieval entrances to the town, only the west gate survives because in 1787 the gates were demolished as they were impeding coach travel. The west gate was left standing as it was the city jail. As well as giving its name to the horse gallop, Canterbury also became a musical genre in the 1970s. The Canterbury scene, a type of progressive rock blended with jazz defined by a whimsical psychedelic feel that was often improvised, was driven by a passion to make catchy music that mixed the serious with the silly. Notable bands of the genre were Soft Machine and Caravan. However, members of the groups have complained that Canterbury had very little to do with music and many of them spent more time in London or Whitstable. Obviously Bob Marley is the best-selling reggae artist, but in the 1970s another popular act was Judge Dredd, the first white man to have a reggae hit in Jamaica. Judge Dredd played his last ever gig at the Penny Theatre here in 1998. His final words were, let's hear it for the band, before going off stage and suffering a fatal heart attack. Canterbury has been home to poets, playwrights, musicians and entertainers of all kinds throughout the centuries, so it's no wonder it's hosted the annual Canterbury Festival since 1920. Family home of Richard Lovelace, one of England's most romantic poets, is on the banks of the Stour. Famed 16th century playwright Christopher Marlowe was born and raised in the city, and today the Marlowe Theatre stands in his honour. A number of popular children's characters were created here. Rupert the Bear was created by local artist Mary Tortell. Ex-Beatle, Paul McCartney, wrote and produced a short film called Rupert and the Frog Song, in which he also provided the voice for the titular character, and the song We All Stand Together, which reached number three in the UK singles charts. The film was played continuously in the local Rupert Bear Museum, which closed in 2017. The Clangers and Bagpus were both created here. Peter Furman and Oliver Postgate shot many of their shows just outside the city in Blean. For the older kids, one of James Bond's most famous stories was written in Pet Bottom, a hamlet about five miles from here. Author Ian Fleming was a regular at the Duck Inn where he wrote You Only Live Twice. In the book, Bond is believed to be dead and M, his commander, posts his obituary, which mentions that he lived in a cottage there for about a year at the age of 11. Fleming himself passed away at the age of 56 in Kent and Canterbury Hospital in 1964, on the 12th of August, which happened to be his son's 12th birthday. Charles Dickens also had characters live in the area. 
From his book, David Copperfield, Uriah Heep was said to live here at number 4 Lower Chantry Lane, not far from the city centre. Oddly, all of the houses except number 4 were damaged in 1942 air raids and had to be rebuilt. The Sun Hotel, formerly the Little Inn, was visited by Dickens himself and became the location for uh, Micawber's Little Inn in the same book. Sir John Boy's house is possibly also mentioned in the book, immortalised in the words a very old house bulging over the road, leaning forward, trying to see who was passing on the narrow pavement below, and could well be the place that Copperfield himself was meant to have lived. It was built in 1617 and is one of Canterbury's surviving half-timbered buildings. At the time, the government charged taxes based on how much ground space buildings took up. In order to avoid extra charges, many people exploited a loophole and constructed their homes with a large upstairs and smaller ground floors. The dramatic slant in the building though is fairly recent as photos from the 1900s show. After poorly handled alterations on a chimney, the house began to struggle under the pressure. In 1988 the building collapsed, but the city council and archaeological trust paid for it to be restored and reinforced in order to preserve the fun crooked style. Here on Castle Street is the birthplace of William Somner, the author who created the first Anglo-Saxon dictionary in 1959. The history of literature and music in the city is a huge draw for the substantial student population, many of whom come here to study subjects in one of the four higher education establishments, the University of Kent, Canterbury Christchurch University, the University for the Creative Arts and Geoun American University, Canterbury Campus. As well as these modern institutions, Canterbury is home to the oldest school in the world to still be functioning. King's School, established 597 AD, is a public school located on the cathedral grounds. Former pupils include Field Marshal Montgomery and the aforementioned Christopher Marlowe. Somehow we managed to go this long speaking about Cantorian history without mentioning the cathedral. But that will have to wait until next time. We've got a lot more fun facts to give you yet. <laughs>